Hey everybody, it's Dan, and in this video we're going to look at the Italian game, one of the oldest openings out of the King's Pawn repertoire. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the opening already, uh, but for those of you who aren't, it starts with e4, e5, uh, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop c4. Now obviously along the way both players have ample opportunity to enter different opening systems, but for the Italian game, black here plays bishop to c5. And in this position, there are two main lines we'll look at in this video. The first is the more common c3, and the second is the less common d3. There's also b4 here, which is known as the Evans Gambit, which is a very sharp, fun line to play as white, but that will be the subject of a later video. So the first variation is bishop to c3. And this move is obviously prepping an expansion into the center with d4. Uh, black has two defensive resources here, knight to f6 and queen to e7. Some say queen to e7 is better than its reputation, in fact, Alekhine said that, but it does enter some choppy waters for black, so let's look at queen to e7 first. From here, white pushes d4, and black retreats the bishop. Uh, white castles, and black brings out the knight. Uh, white puts the rook on the e-file, a typical move. Black bolsters their center, and white plays a4, threatening to trap the bishop and forcing a6. Now, white plays h3 to prevent the bishop from coming down and causing problems. Black can start a king's head initiative, and white is going to want to get the dark square bishops off the board, since black's bishop on d6 is putting pressure on f2, which is uncomfortable for white. So, white here plays bishop to e3. Uh, black continues with the pawn advancements, and now white can change the pawn structure in the center and capture uh, de and after the recapture uh, off come the black the dark square bishops here white is going to voluntarily retreat the knight to h2 since the pawn was getting ready to push and threaten to open up white's castle position and this way the knight keeps an additional eye on g4 and the last book move in this variation for black is bishop to e6 offering another bishop exchange and both sides stand more or less equal Maybe a slight edge for white thanks to the first move initiative and the fact that it's white's move now. So uh, to go back here to this position, right here. So uh, I did want to cover one move that black might make, uh, but which is actually going to hurt their position. And that is going to be pawn to d6. Uh, this actually leads to a worse position even though on the surface it's a logical looking move uh, because after uh, white's fifth move pawn to d4 black is going to either cede a strong pawn center to white or lose a pawn for example if uh, e captures d white simply recaptures and has a majority in the center after black retreats the bishop to b6 uh, if black doesn't retreat the bishop, but instead tries to play aggressively with something like bishop to b4 check, thinking white will block with a minor piece, and black will be able to get rid of its bad bishop, white has a nice resource in this position, and that's just to sidestep uh, the check with king to f1, and now white can win a piece. For example, if black makes a move like knight to f6, uh, d5 kicks away the knight, and then... Uh, Queen to a4, check wins the bishop. Um, alternatively, if in this position, uh, if, it, if in this position right here, black backs the bishop up to a5, same thing, pawn kicks away the knight, and then we have the check picking off the bishop. So in short, right here, as black, right here, don't play pawn to d6, bad things happen. So now uh, let's look in this position right here at knight to f6. Uh, this continues with mostly uh, the most common main line that you'll see. So after knight to f6, white moves ahead with his plan of controlling the center with d4. Uh, and here black really wants to capture uh, with the e-pawn. Um, if black backs the bishop up right here, this can lead to a one position right out of the opening for white. After the pawn captures DE, uh, the pawn is attacking the knight, and unfortunately the knight really doesn't have any good squares to play to. Moves like knight to G8 and knight to H5 are terrible, that's not how you want to treat your knight. A move like knight to G4 here, trying to attack the pawn on uh, E5, fails tactically to bishop captures on F7 check, 
and then we have knight to g5 check, and then the queen is going to be able to come out to g4, and uh, now white is up two pawns of material with a very active position. So the only other move uh, available in this position right here for black is uh, knight captures on e4, uh, but this is also going to end very badly for black. Uh, the queen here can simply swoop in to d5, threatening mate on f7 and attacking the unprotected knight. Black can try something out of desperation here and play bishop captures on uh, f2 check, but the king can calmly move to f1, and black's whole house is ready to fall. There's still the mate threat on f7, the unprotected knight on e4, and that unprotected knight is the only protector of the bishop on f2, so once the knight goes, uh, the bishop will be under attack by white's king. So, in short, to back up to this position right here, as black, don't back up the bishop. You pretty much need to take the pawn uh, on d4. White here obviously is going to recapture, and now black has a choice. The aggressive bishop to b4 check, or the passive bishop b6. Bishop b6 is, uh, as it has been throughout the video, by far the worst move. It basically lets white mobilize their center pawns and kick around the black pieces. Once the pawns attack the knights, black's best move in this position here is going to be to take the pawn. Uh, if black tries to be slick and execute some sort of tactic against f2, for example, uh, the knight capturing on f2, they're actually going to pay. Uh, here you can just have the queen come out to b3, and if the knight gets greedy and captures the rook, uh, the bishop is a check on f7, and then the dark square bishop springs into action, and black here is going to have to give up the queen to avoid mate. So that's why in this position, uh, again, best move is going to be to take the pawn, and after takes, takes, the knight jumps to c6, c6, sorry, and white attacks the queen, and with the pawn on d6, black uncastled, and the open e-file, the computer scores this position decisively in white's favor. So all that is to say, once again, in this position right here, as black, don't back up the bishop, uh, bishop to b6 is not good, instead uh, black should go for the more aggressive bishop to b4 check, and now it's white that has to decide how best to proceed. There are two options, bishop to d2 and knight to c3. Knight to c3 actually leads to a very tactically uh, sharp attack for white called the Meller attack. What that looks like here is after the knight blocks, uh, black captures on e4, and white castles, and black captures the knight, and here white plays the very interesting in-between move, pawn to d5. This move initiates the Meller attack, and is as far as I'm going to go, actually, in this video. The theory goes on from here, and the end result is that your average black player is going to have a very difficult time properly defending from all the threats white is going to bring to bear. However, to look at all the different ways black could defend, either successfully or unsuccessfully, would make this video even more crowded than it already is, so I'm going to put that off till later and make a shorter, separate video exclusively on the Meller attack. So, uh, the Meller attack is what can happen if, in this position, uh, white blocks the check with the knight. Uh, the other option is bishop to d2, and what that looks like here is the bishops are exchanged, uh, the knight on b recaptures, and black strikes in the center. We have some pawn exchanges, and then uh, white brings the queen to b3, threatening immediately the knight, uh, but also putting pressure on b7. Black counters with knight on c to e7, both sides can castle, and white moves the rook to uh, the rook f to e1, placing it on an open file. And black here can play c6. And this right here, move 12, is the end of the book for this variation. Now, I did want to back up one moment to this position right here, and look briefly at uh, what can happen if black runs with the move knight captures on e4. From here, white should capture the bishop. The knight recaptures, and white can get the pawn back by capturing uh, bishop on f7, and after the king recaptures, queen to b3 picks off the knight and restores the material balance. Uh, and this actually here is a very uh, fairly equal position. Black has a strong knight in the center, but the king is slightly misplaced and will have to expend an extra move to castle artificially, while white's queen is in a good position as well and can castle in one move. All the lines we just looked at result from white's fourth move, c3. There are other moves white can run with here that aren't nearly as complicated as c3. As I mentioned earlier, d3 is an option here. Um, what that looks like is the following. You have knight out to f6, 
knight c3, d6, opening up access for black's light square bishop. Uh, the symmetry, however, is broken here with white's next move, bishop to g5. After black forces the issue, we have a bishop for knight exchange with the queen recapturing. Now white jumps the knight into d5 with the tempo on the queen, and the queen has to return home to protect against the fork on c7. c3 now preps an expansion into the center, and black prepares a spot for the bishop on a7. After d4 on the pawn exchange, the bishop backs up. Uh, real quickly, I just want to mention here that checking on b4 actually allows white to regain the lost bishop, and typically the bishop pair can prove to be an asset, so that wouldn't be a really wise decision for black. Um, so after the bishop backs up to a7, h3 prevents bishop down to g4, and here both sides can castle, and they stand more or less equal in this position. So that's the Italian game. It's a tactically rich opening, and very fun to play, although I have gotten very few chances to play it since most black players play the Sicilian in response to e4. But I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. Stay tuned for the Grand Master game, as well as the video on the Meller attack and the Evans Gambit. I know I've been really excited about making an Evans Gambit video. From what I've seen so far, the Gambit typically leads to very exciting lines, so be sure to check it out soon. Comments and questions are, as always, welcome, and thanks for watching.